Okay, a few things to clarify before moving on. The first campaign journal was actually two sessions in one. Uh, in the first session, they traveled with the caravan, fought the goblins, made it to Sandpoint, the port city. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, see. Met with Sansa downright, entered the sewers, killed the pirates. Clear. What? Yes, you have to be real close. Yeah. Train of thought. Here we go. Sansa downright. Sansa downright. Met Sansa downright. Killed the pirates, covered in filth, went back to the speakeasy to get cleaned up and rest. That was session one. Session two was when they had decided... Well, that was session two. Yeah, you guys did a whole session of shopping. No, we didn't. Yeah, but that's awesome. No, we didn't. Okay. No, we didn't. So the second session was entirely shopping, refitting. They spent a lot of time at the blacksmith. The Griffin's Armament. A Fire Titan is the blacksmith. Sam, who plays the half-elf ranger, he was given a ancient dryad bow. I thought this was a really cool item because uh, Sam can ask the bow questions. Uh, it's kind of modeled after Treant from Middle Earth in Lord of the Rings because he speaks really slow. He never gives a straight answer. I, I hope that Sam gives, uses the bow, asks more questions. Because, he really will. Yeah, he has been asking it questions, but he can always ask more. He can do whatever he wants. There's no wizards in this party. There's a druid. Autumn's cousin Libby plays a gnome druid. She's a loner. The second session. I've, I really enjoyed the second session. It was just shopping, resting recuperating those are things that need to happen in D&D and you're gonna know when your players want to do something like that because they're going to say hey I want to go to the pet shop (laughs) which is exactly what my wife wanted to do Uh, as soon as they had rested from they didn't even rest she my wife's character a half dragon covered in sewage didn't even get cleaned up she wanted immediately to go to a pet shop That was something as a DM that I hadn't considered. Is there a pet shop? Sure. Of course there's a pet shop. Oh, yeah. On the port side of Sandpoint, uh, I just quickly made up that there was like an exotic pet dealer. This is probably somebody who came in with a ship and is leaving with a ship tomorrow. Some of these pets may or may not have been legal, uh, but that was okay. I had my computer in front of me, quickly Googled random pet generator. Boom. Pops up. There's a fennec fox. There's a kitten. A couple things like that. I know that my wife loves foxes, so hey, there's a fennec fox. There's owls. You know, I just made up a dozen, just a dozen. And one of the things I made up was that there was a displacer kitten. Anybody who's familiar with D and D knows about displacer beasts. Uh, these are creatures that their physical body is in a separate place from where everyone can see the creature. The image of their body is displaced from where they physically are. So why not just why not just use that same type of creature for something that's cute and cuddly, like a kitten? My wife loves kittens. It's a displacer kitten. So she made off with a uh, fennec fox, a displacer kitten. I am a big fan of using all different types of genres and literature in Dungeons & Dragons. Make it a mishmash. Put everything together. I put a Niffler in there. There's a baby Niffler. Anybody who's familiar with the Harry Potter universe, and especially the movie that just came out, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I had put a Niffler in my game. So, hey, she wants to go to the pet shop. There's a baby Niffler. It's not going to be very useful for her in the beginning, but it's her baby. She loves it. Her cousin, Libby, who's playing the gnome druid, accompanied her as a druid. She's going to know about nature and talk things through. It was a great time. It was a great session to just relax, hang out. I got to find out more about the world. It was a great time. So their third session 